Hello, this is Paul Cheney with Spartan Design University. Before you actually start building a responsive website, you need to think through your design. And, and I like to draw up wireframes. They're usually just black and white. And these I show to my client. I get approval before I move to the next step. So here I've got a desktop mock-up. I'm going to have a logo up here in the corner. I'm going to have the company name and slogan. Notice right here there's a border between the header and the navigation bar. I've got a nice big graphic, kind of as a hero image. Then I've got my content image over here to the side with two columns, one for news items and one for their Twitter account with the footer at the bottom. So that's the desktop version of this. Let's take a look now at the tablet version. Basically the same thing. I've got my logo, my company name. Once again, there's a bar separating it with my, my navigation. Now this does not have um, two level deep navigation. It's just single level. So I'm just going to keep it straight across. Fact is, there's only going to be four links on this site. Um, the difference here is that my news and my tweets, instead of being side by side, are now stacked one above the other one. On the phone, my navigation appears immediately under the logo. They're nice rounded buttons that look buttonish. Now this is probably not the best design if you're going to have several buttons, but it works for two or three, even up to four. Very simple. We'll start there and we'll get more complex as we move along. Um, the hero image, once again. Now this time, that graphic that showed up with text wrapped around it, this time it is also full width. And then I've got my news and my tweets, once again, filling the width of my phone. So with that kind of in mind, let's start by working on the header of our page. Now on the desktop, I have the HTML5 start file, which you can download at the beginning of this lesson. It contains the four CSS files and they're all linked together. We're going to be having this logo in the header of our image. It is a 24-bit PNG, which means I can put it over or on top of any color and it will still look nice. So let me drag that into there. And then we'll pull up Dreamweaver, which is going to be our editor for this lesson. And inside the header, I'm going to go ahead and drop in that image. So there's my basic image tag. We have a source equals and an alt equals. It's the logo and One nice thing about um, Dreamweaver, you've got this little point to file. I can just click over here and point to the logo and it fills it in for me, the path and everything. I've saved that. Let me jump back to my browser, hit refresh. There's my logo. And remember from my design that the logo is supposed to be to the left and the company name and slogan are to the right. So let's get this down so we can preview what the phone is going to look like. And then we'll start working on that. Let's go back to our phone. So here we are in the phone defaults. I've got my header. The header is going to have a background color. And it's not quite black, but it's almost. And remember from our design documents, there is a little thin line separating the header from the navigation area. So I'm just going to put that as a border on my header. Borders need three things. They need to be what kind of a border, the color, this is going to be six, 5FF09, which is that bright green. And we're going to make it five pixels wide. Now, at this point, that border is going to go all the way around the header, which is not what I want. I simply want a dividing line. So this needs to be border dash bottom. There we go. So now I've got our dark color, we've got our dividing line, and we've got our logo. Problem is, our company name 
is black on black, so we can't really see it. So now let's talk to the header image. We're going to do a couple things with it. First of all, float it to the left. And we're going to put padding around it. Now the first value, if I have two values, the first value is the top and the bottom. The second value is the left and the right. So I'm going to push it down from the top, a hard value of 0.5 EMs, which is 8 pixels. And the 2% left and right are going to scale, and we'll see how those work here in a minute. I'm going to set it. Let's leave it for that, and we'll come back. Hit refresh. Notice it's got a little bit of space there, a little bit of space there. As I make it wider, that space increases. That's 2% there, and that's 2% there which is much wider than this space, but it's still 2% of the available width. So it keeps a nice elastic look to it. Now we have a problem. Our headers collapsed and this green line is now up above the graphics. So we need to force that to keep open. What happens is when you have an image and you float that image, it lifts it off the page and allows the things that are underneath it to move up. So there's our site name and tagline. They are still within the header, but all this stuff below it, which is our navigation, has collapsed up because the header and the H group has collapsed around this image. So we're going to insert an empty div. And this is nice, autocomplete, Dreamweaver. We're going to use this a lot, so we'll use a class equals. And the purpose of this empty div is to keep the header from collapsing. So we'll call it keep open. Save it. Let's go to our phone default. I'm going to add another section at the bottom down here for my other stuff. And by using a Dreamweaver dot, it opens all of the classes that I have built. And there's keep open. And I just need to say clear both. That should now keep the header open, the green line below it, and force the navigation to stay down there. Now all I need to do is fix my H1 and my H2. Now this is really basic code. I'm not going to hand type it. It takes too long. So let me just paste it in here. And the header. Okay, so we're going to replace these two with this. We have a font size increase to 1.8, padding to the top to push it down. We're going to change the color. And we're going to set the H2. Once again, light, slightly smaller font size from 1.8 down to 1.2, padding top, padding right, padding bottom, padding left, and then a different color. I think these are uh, pink and yellow. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, those are in place, but they are the wrong font. So let's go change our default font family. And we're going to do that in the biggest thing, which is the body tag, so that everything on this page is going to be switched now to Verdana. Verdana exists on 99.9% .9 of all computers, phones, and tablets. However, if it doesn't, you can go ahead and use Geneva. If that doesn't exist, you can use Sans Serif. I should switch everything, and there we go. So there's our desktop or phone version, which looks the same because the member of the phone goes all the way through tablet and through desktop. Now. Yeah. Our phone's okay, but let's say on the tablet we want to push this down away from the top a little bit. So let's switch to our tablet CSS. Find our header section, and we'll do header h1, heading dash top, change it to 1.1 EMs. So that should push it down a little bit. 
Oh, I forgot to save it. A little star right there it tells me I didn't save it. There we go. So it's pushed down. And of course, the site name and the tag name are, tag line are completely wrong. So let's come over here and change the site name to responsive design. don't settle for less than a really good responsive site. There we go. So there's our phone version, tablet, and desktop.